Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2 crashed into theaters with all the action and comedy fans of the franchise have been waiting for, not to mention dozens of in-jokes and callbacks to both the previous film and comics. If you didn't spot them all, don't worry. We picked out some of the most interesting and obscure Easter eggs in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Fair warning, major spoilers coming up. Star-Lord's Shirt Guardians is full of tiny details, which is part of what makes the films so fun to watch. But one of the weirdest questions in Guardians Vol. 2 got answered before the movie even came out. Several of the trailers show Peter Quill wearing a shirt with a weird, alien-looking logo. To most people, it was just a cool-looking shirt, but to Guardians superfans, it was a challenge. As one Reddit user figured out, the graphic on the front of the shirt actually says Gear Shift in an alien language, the language used on a keyboard in the first film. Exactly what that means is still a mystery, but hey, it's pretty cool regardless. The Cronin Connection as Rocket and Yandu are portal jumping across planets to reach Ego, we see a ton of interesting visuals, like the legendary Stan Lee talking to a group of Watchers. But one other cool glimpse we got was of a barren alien planet with two hulking aliens beating each other up. Those guys look a lot like Cronins, a technologically advanced, militant race of beings that look sort of like big humanoid rocks. So what's the connection? Well, we've already seen a Cronin in the Marvel Cinematic Universe in Thor The Dark World. That guy got blasted into gravel. But Thor Ragnarok will feature another Cronin, Korg, who in the comics becomes Hulk's ally. Korg's role in Ragnarok is still unknown, but now that Guardians took the time to feature the race of Rockmen, we have to wonder, was Korg one of those figures fighting in Guardians? Or was that shot simply put in as a bonus for any fan paying close attention, with no bearing on the rest of the MCU? Cosmo Returns One of the weirdest characters from the comics has now made an appearance in both Guardians films. We're talking, of course, about Cosmo, the space-suited dog who runs up and licks the Collector in the post credit scene from the first film. Cosmo showed up a few times before that in the Collector's, uh, collection. And just like Howard the Duck, this guy was back for another round of the post credit scenes of Guardians 2. At first, this easter egg seems like a simple callback to the first film. But what you may not know is that Cosmo is actually a recurring character in the Guardians comics and cartoons, and he does a lot more than lick people when they're sad. Cosmo is a, well, he's a telepathic space dog who acts as head of security for nowhere. That's where we meet the Collector in the first film, and he's incredibly powerful. For example, in Thanos Imperative No. 2, Cosmo single-handedly killed the Hulk with a mental shockwave, and he once went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Adam Warlock and came out on top. This is one doggy you don't want to mess with. And while we're hanging out on Nowhere, Celestial Trifecta Ego's reveal as a Celestial was pretty big news in Guardians 2. If you didn't know, the Celestials are an extremely powerful cosmic race. They're basically space gods, as Ego himself said in the movie. But this isn't the first time we've seen a Celestial in the Guardians of the Galaxy films. It's actually the third time. The one most fans know about popped up in the first Guardians when Star-Lord and his troop went to nowhere to meet the Collector. While explaining the Infinity Stones, Collector shows them a video of a big metal man with the purple one, blasting people into dust. These carriers can use this stone to mow down entire civilizations like wheat in a field. That guy was basically a photocopy of the Marvel comic Celestials. And the third Celestial? Well, it's in the same scene. They were all standing on it. In it, to be exact. Nowhere, the Collector's little black market mining colony, is the severed head of a Celestial. It's called Nowhere the severed head of an ancient celestial being. So, when Ego revealed he was a celestial, the idea should have been pretty much old hat to fans who've been keeping up with things the whole time. Yandu's big orange fin. Michael Rooker's Yandu looks pretty close to the Yandu of the comics. He's a big blue guy. It's a pretty hard look to screw up. And yet, there's a big difference. In the comics, Yandu's head fin is a big orange mohawk, not the slim tangerine curve of the first film. Well, until Yandu replaces his broken fin with a prototype version in Guardians 2, a prototype that's a bit bigger and much oranger. It still doesn't come close to the glorious head-spanning monstrosity of the early comics, but Yandu's new look takes him one step closer to his comic incarnation, the Crystal Frog. Yandu's little crystal frog practically had a subplot of his own in the first Guardians, although most people completely missed it. Do you got any other cute little buggers like this? I like to stick them all in a roll on my control console. 
I can't tell if you're joking or not. Yeah, that thing. Well, Yandu's got his frog, and he kept it with him. Before he goes into the climactic fight in the skies of Xandar, that little frog is sitting right by his hand. And when his ship crashes on the planet, the crystal frog is the only piece of wreckage Yandu picks up out of the dirt. Unfortunately, Yandu bit the big one, but he still has his frog. In Guardians 2, during the overhead shot of Yandu's funeral pyre, his body is surrounded by ornaments of his life, and one of those symbolic trinkets is, you guessed it, that little blue frog. We can only assume that the frog has been to hell and back again at Yandu's side, so it's only fitting that that's where it remains when Yandu is blasted into space in a million Technicolor bits. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.